Let's get started with Hosted Mender. In your web browser, navigate to hosted.mender.io. From this page, click the sign up link to be taken to a new tab where you can enter credentials and payment information. You must also accept the terms of service and can optionally sign up for our mailing list, which we highly encourage if you are going to be a user of Hosted Mender. Once you click the Sign Up Now button, your account will be created on the system and details and getting started information will be sent to your email address. Now switch back to the login window and enter the credentials you supplied when you created your account. After logging in, you will be viewing the Mender dashboard. This is the central interface that shows the overall status of your device fleet at any given time. Down the left side are the tabs to access the main portions of the user interface. In the Devices tab, you will see all devices that are part of your fleet, including devices that are pending or rejected. Here you can also view, create, and modify device groups based on the unique needs of your application. Next is the Artifacts tab, which will show all Mender artifacts that have been uploaded and are available for deployment. Finally, we have the Deployments tab, which will allow you to trigger over-the-air updates to your devices, as well as to monitor the status of ongoing deployments. You will also find fleet-wide deployment history here. For the next step in our tutorial, navigate over to the menu located at the upper right where your username is displayed. Pull down the menu and open the Help page, which contains information about getting started with deployments to Mender reference devices. We'll start by provisioning a virtual device. Click on the Virtual Device link to display instructions and details for starting a Kimu device that can connect to hosted Mender. These instructions will help you run the virtual device on any system that can run Docker containers. Your tenant token will be embedded into the target image, and the Mender.conf file will be set up to point at hosted Mender. Let's do that now. You see here that I am setting the environment variable tenant token and running Docker. This will download a number of Docker images to your system and start the Docker container that runs the Kimu instance with Yocto and Mender integrated. This will take a little while to process, so while that is running, let's move over to the Raspberry Pi board. To set up and provision a Raspberry Pi, go back to the web browser and select the Raspberry Pi 3 link from the Mender help topics. If you scroll down to the heading, Download the Disk Image, you will see links for the SD card image as well as for the Mender artifact file. Instructions are available in this help page detailing how to provision your Raspberry Pi platform with the provided SD card images. Additional information is available here regarding booting the device. Let's move back over to the terminal window and run the script that I prepared that pulls all these steps together. Note that it uses curl to download the SD card image, decompresses it, and writes it to a file on my build host. After that, the DD utility is used to flash the image to the SD card. While that image is being flashed, we can move back over to the terminal window for the emulated device and see that the device has finished its boot. The demo images are accessed as the user root with no password. To view the Mender logs, you can invoke the journal ctl command. This will confirm that Mender is indeed up and running. Now that the SD card has been provisioned with the Raspberry Pi image, I've inserted it into my board, connected power, Ethernet, and a USB serial adapter. I launch Picocom to access the serial console of the device and power it on. While that board is booting, let's take another look at the console on the emulated device. You'll notice that there are messages about authentication requests being rejected. This is expected behavior as your devices need to be explicitly admitted or pre-authorized with your fleet. If they are not pre-authorized, then an operator must manually admit them on their first attempt to connect. We can now log into the Raspberry Pi with the username of root and no password. Viewing the Mender logs, we will see the Mender client generating the initial device keys and then attempting to connect to the server, at which time we will see the authentication requests being rejected. Now that both devices are running and attempting to connect to the server, if we return to the hosted Mender UI, we will see them listed as pending authorization. In this case, we are expecting both of them, so we will authorize them to be admitted. Once the devices are in the fleet, on their next check-in with the server, they will transmit their inventory information. Once the inventory has been received, we will note that the device types are as expected and that both systems are installed with the image version Mender-1.5.0. 
Clicking through the summary information will open up the device details where you can see fields such as the MAC address, IP address, CPU model, and other pertinent information. Now, let's deploy some updates to these devices. Navigate back to the hosted Mender Help pages to download compatible Mender artifacts. Select the appropriate help topic from the list on the left of the page. From this screen, you will see artifacts compatible with each of the reference devices. Artifact 1 contains the same root file system that was deployed previously to the SD card. Artifact 2 contains a new software version that we are going to install. Download the artifacts you need, and when the download is complete, navigate back to the hosted Mender UI and select the Artifacts tab. From here, click Browse and select the artifact files to upload. For now, I'll only upload Artifact 2 to avoid the extra upload time. Once the artifacts are uploaded, you can click through the summary information to view details about each artifact. To actually trigger this deployment, navigate to the Deployments tab and click the Create a Deployment button. In the pop-up window, make sure to select the appropriate target artifact to deploy. In our case, it's Release 2 1.5.0. Once an artifact is selected, you can see which device types are compatible. You also need to select an appropriate group on which to install this update. In our case, we will use the All Devices group. Then simply click the Create Deployment button. The deployment is created in the pending state. Once all targeted devices have checked in and been informed of the update, it will transition to the in-progress state. If we switch back to the console windows, you'll notice that there are log messages indicating that a new update is being installed. Note that the update is streamed directly to the passive root file system partition. This reduces the amount of storage needed by the client during the update phase. Now, let's make things interesting. I'm going to manually reboot the emulated device before the installation completes to simulate a failed update. The Mender logic in the device bootloader will determine that the update was not fully installed and roll back to the previously active partition. Now we see that the Raspberry Pi has completed the install and is rebooting. Once the system is up and running, the Mender client will connect to the server, report a successful update, and commit it, so that subsequent reboots will use the newly installed partition. If we navigate back to the hosted Mender UI, we see that the deployment is now marked as complete, with one of the devices reporting success and one of the devices reporting failure as expected. Similarly, if we go to the Devices tab, we see that the Raspberry Pi does have the new Release 2 update, but the emulated system does not. And that is Hosted Mender. Thank you for your time. Please reach out to us at contact at mender.io with any questions.